Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Shane. For those who are new, welcome back if you're returning. Let's start off today's video by saying that I am not a true crime expert. I am simply a true crime fan. So take everything I say as an allegation, speculation, or opinion unless proven otherwise in the court of law. I don't want to be sued. I will also start this video off by saying I'm not going to refer to Micah as Micah Miller anymore and I'm going to respect her wishes as provided in the divorce as wanting to take back her maiden name as Fran. Francis. So from now on, if I do refer to Micah with a last name, it will be Micah Francis. If you watched my last video, we talked briefly about the protests that were taking place at Solid Rock Church. I believe they're still going on every Sunday, so even this weekend we may have an update. It looks like the pastor might be taking some steps in order to try to possibly dissuade the protests from happening. You can put as many fences as you want. People are still going to show up. I don't know. It just doesn't, it just doesn't sit very well with me that he's uh, going this far. Now in the protest last week when J.P. Miller came outside and turned on the sprinklers, there was another church member by the name of Richard Losell. Richard decided to take it upon himself and take the sprinkler and decide to spray some of the protesters directly soaking them. We talked about the potential of now these protesters filing assault charges toward Richard. So I did find a news article that reads, court date set for man seen spraying solid rock protest. A murals and let man face facing multiple assault charges after police said admitted to using a sprinkler to douse protesters outside Solid Rock Church last week will be in Myrtle Beach Municipal Court next month. Regardless of everything else going on, now I just want to check in next month into this court case uh, or this trial and see uh, see what happens. Robert Wayne Lochelle, 67, was captured on a cell phone video aiming a pressurized sprinkler at several people who gathered in front of Solid Rock on June 30th to raise awareness about DV following the April 27th death of Micah Francis. I know in the article it says Miller, but again. Her husband, John Paul, is founder and senior pastor of the 803 Howard Avenue Church. Lochelle reportedly told officers he turned the sprinkler on to the group after his wife said that she was being frustrated by their presence. The protesters have appeared in front of John Paul Miller's church every week since Micah Francis' death at Lumber River State Park in Robinson County. Or Robeson County, I apologize. Quote, I think it is important that he face charges for his actions because nobody is responsible for what they did that day but him. A woman named Sharon told reporters on Monday and blaming his action on a woman for his acts, acts of aggressions is the very thing that we are out there protesting against. Lochel turned him into Myrtle Beach police hours ahead of his initial appearance in front of Judge Glenn V. O'Hanison? Oh, Hannison? He's charged with five counts of third degree assault. The judge issued a conditional bond ahead of Lachelle's August 14th date. I gotta write that down. Allowing him to continue attending services at Solid Rock. He ordered them not to initiate contact with victims through social media. They're just trying to disrupt church services. They're trying to scare people away by screaming and yelling at them every day, long told News 13 on Monday. Continuing to say they can make their point about justice for Micah anywhere in the world. They don't have to stand at the corner of a church. It's not just a church. I hate that he said a church. What do you mean? <laughs> We're not standing outside of Notre Dame protesting for Micah. Lochelle faces fines of 1087 US dollars for each of the charges. Mind you, there's five of them. I'd give just about anything to be at that court. I'd be... I'd... <sighs> the opportunity to be at that court date on August 14th. Oh my gosh. Mmm, to be a fly on the wall. And it goes on to say this is a developing story. So we're not going to know at least until August when he's going to have his trial um, and where he faces five counts of third degree assault charges. Six, maybe $7,000. Oh, 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 was it worth it? Oh. So I just wanted to touch briefly uh, regarding Richard and what happened with that because I was really curious if he, I believe J.P. Miller was able to talk to law enforcement and get him not arrested right then and there. It already seems that J.P. has, uh, he has some sort of community ties I believe over there where he can kind of um, talk, talk his way out of 
getting into trouble. So I found a couple TikToks regarding JP Miller's father. Now I know that it was something, I believe he started like a school in Pakistan. I'm not gonna say a whole lot to be honest. I'm learning with you today as we go. I'm gonna be doing some more deep diving into him after today's video, but I wanna listen to this and kind of develop my own questions. So when I do my own research, I kind of know where to begin diving into this story. So with that being said, let's get started. There's a lady on TikTok I recommend checking out. I think she uploads like daily quick true crime clips. She goes by the username True Crime with Megan. She'll be linked down below as usual. But she does at least two TikToks talking about Reginald Wayne Miller, JP's father. So we're just gonna let her talk. Okay, I guess we're gonna do it with one sleeve now. <laughs> okay, y'all. So let's talk a little bit about John Paul Miller's father's criminal history. His name is Reginald Reggie Wayne Miller. As many of you may already know, he sent an email to Daily Mail today or yesterday regarding some questions they had for him about all these allegations and Micah's death. And I shared a video earlier about the statements he made about Micah. Now I wanna share some of his past run-ins with the law and some charges that he had, as well as his comments about them. And you gotta wait till the end and listen to what he said. Now he admitted in the email that he was charged with labor fraud, visa fraud, and failure to pay minimum wage in 2014. This was during a case where he was accused of turning his Cathedral Bible College into a forced work camp. Students from overseas told investigators that the classes they were taught were a sham and that Reginald forced them to work at the college or his home for very little pay. They also said that if they refused to work, he would threaten them to have them deported. He ended up serving 15 months in prison after he was arrested and he was released after his sentencing as part of a plea deal. And in that case, they saw his time served as punishment. He was also banned from owning any firearms and given home detention for a year. And he had to do 500 hours of community service. Also, he had to pay $75,000 of restitution to his victim and was then given supervised release for three years. Now, he admitted in the Daily Mail email this is what he said. In 2014, I had signed two student visas, but they knew English because I had been led to believe they did. When they got here, they did not know English. I was supposed to have reported them, but did not giving them English lessons instead. He said, I therefore committed visa fraud by not reporting them and pled guilty to that. Now listen to this next comment. The only reason I was in prison leading up to that pleading is that I had no money for bail because I have never maintained a balance greater than a couple of thousand since all my life has been giving to helping others. Y'all like father like son, right? Justifying his actions and making it all about him and how great of a person he is. You gotta be kidding. He said the other two charges were regarding two students who had worked over the 20 hour requirement of how much they could work and that he had considered some of their hours to be training. Now that's not all. In 2006, he was charged with lewdness and prostitution, dropped the F and out of P in South Carolina. Reportedly, he exposed himself to an undercover male police officer. This was in a bathhouse at Myrtle Beach State Park. The charge was ultimately dropped because he participated in a pre-trial intervention program. Furthermore, he had allegations that he made sexual advances towards two men whose wives were students at the Bible College. Also, anonymous students accused him of making inappropriate advances towards them. So yeah, this family is far from perfect, and John Paul and his father Reginald seem to be a lot alike. JP has a good history with the law as well, run-ins with the law. Surprised I haven't shared that yet. I'll do a video about that tomorrow, about all of his past history with traffic offenses and other things. Not just traffic, there's a lot of things. This case is just getting crazier and crazier by the minute and my heart still hurts greatly for her family and friends. I'll definitely have to look into the video she's alluding to about looking into JP's criminal history. I haven't looked that deep yet. I started seeing comments of come up about Wayne and his sketchy past and all this stuff about maybe like overseas fraud based off of the just two minute video I watched. Yeah, there's a lot to uncover. So we're definitely going to have some videos following just talking about um, Wayne and but we're also going to dive into JP's criminal history as well. Also, I'm curious, where's JP's mom? What does she have to say about these um, homosexual allegations because the people that was mentioned that Wayne was trying to coerce were men. So did that play any part? Um, again, was the mother involved at all? These are questions, again, I can start diving into in another video. However, she does cover one more TikTok where JP himself speaks, so I'm going to let that play. Okay, guys, so John Paul Miller has just shared a new video, and this video is discussing the Dare to Care 
African mission trip that Micah was all about. He's just discussing how they started it and how he's going to continue it in honor of Micah because that's what she would have wanted. He's talking a little bit about the prices and the money and the teacher training and all. So I'm going to attach it. And again, True Crime Marie shared this video. Um, so I wanted to give her credit. Okay, I watched that first part. I saved the video for you guys because I want to react. <sighs> Okay, so this is this is after all this stuff is happening. He's trying to now, I believe JP's just trying to show remorse now. I haven't seen JP's TikToks. Well, clearly he's making videos and posting them somewhere. So if somebody has any leads on that, I would love to see. But yeah, let's just see what let's just see what he has to say. Hey y'all, I was just sitting here looking at some um pictures and videos, of course, of my wife and uh I couldn't even make are you joking? Feel bad for me. I couldn't even I couldn't even, I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate when people are addressing something and it always starts off with this like victim mentality. I was just here pulling out the photo album reminiscing about my poor wife even though I got up on the stage the morning after she um, unalived herself and announced to everybody, oh by the way I had her funeral um, planned. Oh, by the way, did he even, the way that I'm looking at the timeline, she passed on a, on a Saturday. He got up in front of the church on that Sunday. We just covered that sermon in my last video. If you want to go check it out, I will also link it down below. And then he already announces her funeral. But he was caught out having drinks at that sushi bar with Susie Skinner. He really did that before the funeral even happened. I can neither confirm nor deny that at this very moment. But I believe, based off of what we know on uh, of the timeline, yeah. Hey y'all, I was just sitting here looking at some um, pictures and videos, of course, of my wife and uh, couldn't help but come across all the ones that have to do with the mission trips that we went on. I'm not a missionary. I don't like missions trips. I'm a teacher. Uh, I like to stay home. And I don't know if I can even get through this. You just said, listen to what he just said again. I'm not a missionary. I don't like missions trips. Okay, the way that he said that at first sounded like, look, we're, I was looking at all the mission trips that we went on, talking about him and Micah. But then he goes on to say how much he doesn't like missions trips. I don't like missions trips. If he just slipped up there, um, again, trying to make it like, oh, look at all the stuff we to do together. But then, oh yeah, I don't like doing that at all. Or if he's kind of referring to like the we is like Micah and the church. Two seconds in, I already... Uh, I like to stay home and teach. But she loved the mission trips, and especially uh, when she went to Africa last year. When she came back, I picked her up at the airport, and she was uh, overwhelmed with joy. And um, she came back, she said she wanted to start a school, a Faith First Academy in Africa. And I said, Micah, you can't do that. I said, that's not possible. We don't have the money. We don't have the resources. We don't have the teachers, the curriculum, the location, the place. We don't have it all. Well, that was kind of a challenge for her. And so for the next month, um, and the way when you communicate with Africa, they're in a completely different time, of course. And so when you send them a message, you don't get a response to the next day. And then you send it and then the next day. And um, about a month later, she brought me a notebook. She had the teachers, the location. She even had the lunch lady, someone who was going to bring these children food. And um, she brought me everything we needed. And she got it down to about $500 a child per year. And then I'm the good guy that's good with financial stuff. And so I was able to get it down to $300 uh, for a year for a child to go to school there. And that includes the food that they get each day. And so it just seems like there's always this pattern with these pastors. I mentioned with Jesse Duplantis. I men mentioned it with Kenneth Copeland. Now J.P. Miller, even his father, Wayne Miller, what he had to pay $75,000 towards something like all these pastors seem to just always have money even jp himself is now saying i'm the good guy that's good with financial stuff i'm always picking up on that subtle detail that these pastors always seem to have a little bit of money or, or are always alluding to it uh, we sent a team uh at the beginning of this year and uh, we were expecting about 75 maybe 80 kids the first day we had 150 by the end of the week we had 300 and now we have about 350 children begging and pleading for us to start our school back uh in august of this year and so in honor of Micah, we're doing it. It's her mission. She came up with it. She started it. She did all the work. She prepared the way. She laid the foundation. 
And so we are sending a team and we're praying to God that we have enough uh, of what we need to be able to feed the 300 and something kids, uh, curriculum provided, teachers trained and everything. And uh, we're really, really excited. So that's something we have to look forward to. We'll send you pictures when it, when, when we start, when it comes out. And, um, and if you go to, uh, dare to care missions.com, uh, you'll see our website. And that's where Micah started, of course. And so, uh, if you love Micah, you gotta love the people of Jabroc because that was her, uh, big thing that she enjoyed so much. Thanks. You know, I did not like that, especially the ending. Ew, he's using Micah for sympathy. He's like ask he's he's asking for donations toward this ministry, which he just said himself he doesn't even like to do missions trips. But now he's trying to fund this um school that Micah did all the work and the research uh, into opening. Yes, JP says that he helped her uh, get the finances down quite a bit, almost almost by half, according to him. I just fi I find it extremely icky. Now, if this was a normal circumstance where I felt like JP was a true grieving husband and I didn't feel like he had anything to do with it, a uh, husband supporting um, anything his wife started and, and, and deceased in the middle of or was really passionate about, I think it's actually a really beautiful sentiment. However, based off of everything that we know, it's leaning more on malicious than sentimental to me. To me, he didn't have to include Micah at all. Um, the people that are regulars at that church would very well be aware of who Micah is and what the circumstances. I just felt like throwing in that like, do it for Micah, she started it, it's important to her, was kind of a way to pull at people's heartstrings. We will take a deeper dive into Wayne Miller's past as well as some of JP's criminal history as well in a new video. Please let me know what you think down below and I will see you in my next one.